Hello, my name is Adam Radford. I'm a Distinguished Systems Engineer at Cisco and I am doing a demonstration of the integration between the APIC Enterprise Module Plug and Play application and Prime Infrastructure. Before we get going, I'm just going to reset my device to factory defaults. I'm going to do a write erase and a reload just to take this device back to its initial state. What I'm going to show you today is how you can use Prime Infrastructure sitting on top of APKM to do template-based provisioning of an underlying uh, switch, router, or wireless LAN access point. In this particular case, I'm going to do a demonstration with a switch, but this could apply equally to any of the other devices. This is using currently shipping code version 3.02 of Prime Infrastructure and version 1.02 of APKM. Essentially what happens is I use the user interface on Prime Infrastructure and that interacts with an API into APKM um, to configure some rules for the plug and play application or service on APKM and then the plug and play uh, protocol on the switch communicates to the controller, gets access to that configuration and downloads the appropriate files. If I take a look at uh, APKM and look at the project um, test PIPNP you can see this project has been created because I created it in Prime initially, but you can see that there are no rules in that particular project. Um, if I look in the configuration files for the, the configurations that have been loaded onto the APIC, you'll notice that there are 10 of those already. Um, and if I go back to uh, the projects um, and look at my project, we'll have a look at, uh, and you can see there is no, uh, no rules that are created there. If I go to Prime Infrastructure and if I go into Configuration um, and Plug and Play Profiles, you'll be able to see that I have set up a test PNP profile. Uh, in that profile, uh, I've enabled PKI. I can choose images, uh, image locations. Uh, I've configured a configure, uh, chosen a switch template. Um, that could be anything that is in my template uh, inventory. I've also chosen a post plug and play configuration template. So this is another set of configuration, typically AAA or VRF configuration, that can be also applied to the switch, but after the initial plug and play process is complete. The plug and play application on uh, APKM is for day zero. Uh, and this is an example of a, an extra piece of configuration that has been put onto the, the switch. Uh, if I look at the device details, uh, you can see there are no devices associated with this project or profile. Um, I'm going to add one here today. It's going to be 3650 DNS. A serial number I'm going to borrow from my presentation. Uh, I need to put into that the serial number. The configuration template um, I have chosen actually has a parameter. Um, I can have as many of these as I want um, that allows me to put in a variable for uh, the name of the switch and I get to apply that. The post uh, configuration template actually doesn't have any variables. It could if I wanted to but in this particular case it doesn't. Uh, and then all I need to do is to put in um, some parameters here for contacting the device because once it has been configured, it will use those to apply the post configuration. That's all I need to do. Once I have made that change, uh, that rule will be created on Prime Infrastructure and that rule will be pushed down to the APKM and then when the switch connects to the network, and contacts the controller, it will have the appropriate configuration downloaded to it. Configuration has been successful and if I was to look at APKM, notice a couple of things. If I was to um, firstly look at the configurations that I have on the controller, uh, you notice that there is now 11. Uh, one of those is for that particular template. I can look at that and see that in fact, that variable has been uh, instantiated in terms of the host name, DSN. I made a typo, but that's okay. 
If I go back into projects and look at my project, you notice now there has been a rule created with the name, um, product ID, um, a MAC address, oh, sorry, a serial number, and a configuration file. Now that that rule has been set up, um, once the switch starts to boot, it's going to use, um, in this case, it's actually going to use DNS to contact the controller. It could use DHCP option 43, um, but in this case, it's going to use DNS. I'm not going to touch the um, the screen here. Um, what I'm going to do is to refresh um, this screen on the APKM, and you'll get to see the device going through various stages of um, contacting the controller, having security set up, and having the um, configuration deployed. I could also have chosen to deploy an image as well. I have chosen not to in this case. Uh, if I had, that would, image would have been downloaded to the device as well. You can see here that the controller is now getting information about the device. So it's going to, um, the device has contacted the controller, the controller is going to establish a secure communication with the device and find out information about that device. Notice that it's now waiting for the resource and it's now starting to provision the deploying device certificate which is part of the uh, plug and play process and now that that's been done it's now deploying the configuration and you can see that the device is now being provisioned. I haven't touched anything on the CLI um, if I was to quickly log in of now you notice that um, the switch is actually being configured um, the enable password is being configured um, you can see that the, the switch is being configured. The um, The extra configuration hasn't been done yet, that will be done very soon by Prime Infrastructure. So if I go back to um, Prime Infrastructure and if I was to look at the plug and play status, so the startup config has been provisioned, I get full access to all of the logs about the history of everything that's happened to the device. Um, and you'll notice here there's a message on the console saying that it's been configured by the user SDN um, from this particular IP address. And if I was to refresh this, you notice that the plug post plug and play status uh, has also been configured. So if I was to take a look at the running config now, you'll see that all of the AAA um, authentication authorization commands have been configured on this particular device. So that shows you how easy it is to configure uh, a device based on templates using Prime Infrastructure. If I was to take a look at those configuration templates, um, this is one of the ones that I created earlier but very easy to do. Uh, essentially what you're able to do is you're able to um, just put standard CLI into this template. There's a templating language we use um, based on, uh, called VTL, um, which you're free to, to look at. And if you notice here, um, I've done a very simple um, template where I've just got a variable called hostname. Um, those variables are, are set up over on the right-hand side here. If you click on plus manage variables, that's the way that you create variables um, that are used inside this templating language. So as I said, this is a very simple template just to show you an example. Um, this could have anything that you wanted in it um, and some of the templates that if you look at some of the templates that we have configured for other things, they can be quite complex with if statements, um, etc. So that concludes the demonstration. Uh, I hope you found that, that useful, um, how easy it was to configure a device using templates in Prime Infrastructure using APPM. Thanks very much for, for watching.